In 1916, a treaty was signed with Canada and Mexico prohibiting the hunting of ducks and geese in the Arctic. People of Alaska were enraged with this law. So what did they do? They took out their guns and started shooting at the game warden. Please turn off all cell phones and beepers. Enjoy your movie! From March 10th to September 1st, it was illegal to shoot ducks and geese according to the 1916 treaty. The problem was, by the time September showed up, all the ducks had migrated. And the problems didn't stop there. Barrow people lived off the land. They depended on birds, caribou, fish, whale, and eider duck, which were the key elements in their diet. They weren't about to give up one of their main meals. We were not about to change our diet, not about to change our habits. We just have an ecological clock that says, Hey, the ducks are here again. Let's eat them. Our clock is stronger than the law, which is not our law. Enter Harry Pinkham, a new game warden. He was out of the frying pan and into the fire. He was a man that went by the book, and it wasn't going to be easy. Another important player was Sadie Neacock, the first woman judge in Alaska. A mom of 11, she had a law on her hands. Her office was her kitchen, and in it resided a bookshelf filled with law books. Harry Pinkham didn't expect such a rebellious town. On May 20th, 1961, Pinkham noticed a barrel man hunting geese. He was aghast at such an obvious breach of the law and took away his gun and newly shot geese. Pinkham hoped that the man would turn himself in because he knew an arrest wouldn't be popular with the natives of Barrow. Pinkham tried to get Sadie Neacock to agree with the law, but she wanted to change it. No, I don't want any part of it. You can take care of it. On May 29th, Pinkham was accompanied by Johnny Newsom Jr., a representative of the Alaska legislator who was carrying his rifle. They were walking down the road and Pinkham was explaining his reasons for enforcing the migratory bird treaty. Pinkham thought that Newsom Jr. would be a good example to the others. Suddenly, a flock of ducks flew overhead. Newsom Jr. whipped up his rifle and shot one. Pinkham arrested him on the spot. I was pleased that I had shot dinner for my family and then completely surprised when I got arrested. What's a man got to do to live? Johnny Newsom Jr.'s arrest was like adding gasoline to the fire. The next day, Pinkham was told to look at his front door. His compliance resulted in an amazing sight. Almost the whole population stood in the street and all were holding a dead duck. Pinkham was flabbergasted and unsure what to do, so he made his way to Sadie Neacock's house. She was expecting him. She reminded him that he was required to fill out a form on every lawbreaker. On his return, he discovered about 300 people signing a letter to President Kennedy that demanded the freedom to shoot ducks and geese. Pinkham adjourned to his desk and hand wrote 138 notes that explained each person's name to kill the duck out of season. Every note was proudly signed by the borough residents. He had to arrest all persons, but there was no jail in Alaska that could harbor them, so the next best thing was the old theater. They were a happy group of prisoners. The hours added up, and within these 60-minute intervals, the news reached Juno's governor and the Alaska legislator. After considerable discussion, they decided to allow the Barrow residents the privilege to shoot ducks and geese any time. The 138 prisoners were released and returned to their families and lived happily ever after. Stop! Wait! Hold on! There's more to this story. This rebellion brought together the Alaska natives, and acting as one, they succeeded in overriding the law banning duck hunting. This wasn't the last time Alaska native subsistence was threatened by the government. In the duck and example, the natives stood up and fought back in a colorful but effective way. One government official commented on their act. And I saw that the people, all the people acting together, could win, and I was proud.